Welcome to part 22 of the Mini Golf Marble Machine build. In this video, I'll be building the cover for the motor. The cover will look like a castle and will be easily removable in case the motor needs to be serviced. After measuring the space to figure out some sizes, I cut out the four walls of the castle using quarter inch plywood. I assembled the pieces together and put a small brace in each corner for added support. Once the box was put together, I marked and cut out the first level of the roof that would cover the motor. First, I put the roof on from above. Then, I flipped the box and pushed the roof down so it would be flush with the top of the walls. I poured glue into the corners to help seal the inside so less noise from the motor could escape. After a test fit, I moved on to the next step. I added detailed trim on each corner of the box. Once I had cut out all the pieces to the same size, I sanded one of them into a custom trim corner. This is how my downdraft table works. It's a leftover piece of pegboard that sits on top of a custom made funnel with a pipe at the bottom. The pipe is connected to an enclosed vacuum that can be turned on with a switch. This does a great job of keeping dust from flying all over the garage. I was happy with how the first corner piece looked, so I copied that piece three more times. When all four pieces were ready, I glued them onto the box. The plan was to make a bunch of little cylindrical towers to sit on top of what has been made so far. These are half inch round dowels. After spending some time sanding down the tops to a point, I realized this was taking way too long and was very difficult to make them all look the same. So I dug up a tool that I hadn't had a chance to use yet. That orange thing is a pencil sharpener for larger pencils and it just so happens to fit a half inch dowel. I cut the dowel into reasonable sizes and attached them to a drill as if they were a drill bit. Then I created the coolest electric pencil sharpener ever. I was actually surprised at how well this worked. I tried to sand this down to make the roof into a straight shape instead of that curved shape. However, after giving that a try, I realized that how they came out of the pencil sharpener looked good and I shouldn't try to modify them anymore. So I had to go back and make some more to replace the ones that had been destroyed. Small towers will sit on each of the four corners of the castle where I had added the extra trim pieces. 
I cut four towers to the exact same height and glued them on. Now, the box is starting to look like a castle. The next step is to work on the top outside edge. I cut a bunch of little pieces all at the exact same height to sit nicely near each other. I wasn't sure how I wanted the upper level to be laid out, so I tested out some configurations to see if one of them clicked. The castle already sits higher than anything else on the machine, so I didn't want it to be too tall. That's why I ended up not using the larger dowel. I put a roof on the square piece and trimmed off the excess edges. I had 10 towers and decided that for painting purposes, it would be better to have 12. That way, the four colors from the four tracks could be evenly used. Carefully, I trimmed the bottoms of the towers to all be different heights, with the ones in the front being shorter than those in the back. With everything figured out, it was finally time to attach the towers. But first, Earthquake! Then, it was time for a test fit and a final sanding. The majority of the castle will be gray. Not the gray that was used for the tracks, but the gray that was used for the corkscrew part of the lift. This meant it had to be entirely sprayed. The roofs of each tower will be painted with the colors of the four tracks, but first I had to prime them with white so they could be easily painted. Here, you can see my thought process for figuring out which tower got which color. The colors in the tracks are red, orange, yellow, and blue. I used the first hole that starts all four tracks to determine the corner colors. Then, each color got two more towers. I did my best to spread them out so two neighboring towers weren't painted the same color.
Okay, now that the castle is done, the next thing to do is to build the stand for the castle to rest on. The castle needs to be easily removable in the event that the motor needs servicing. So I started with the pieces that will support the castle. These three pieces will be what the castle sits on. The castle will conceal the motor and some of the wires. The stand will conceal the rest of the wires and the rest of the openings while making it look like the castle was built into the top of the mountain. So the next step was to finish the bottom part of the stand to blend it into the top of the mountain. Once all the pieces were in place, I spackled and sanded the seams. I'm using a spray can to get the color that I want. So in order to match the stand to the castle, I had to mask a large area so it wouldn't get any unwanted spray paint elsewhere on the machine. When it was ready, I carefully sprayed it. Once it had completely dried, I took off the masking. This is always the scariest part because this is when I'd find out if I made a mistake when taping off the other areas. This time, it went off without a hitch. Here you can see how easily the castle comes off and goes right back on. In the background, you can spot the bigger castle I made from Marble Mountain. In order to do a few touch-ups on some unsprayed areas like the inside walls, I sprayed the paint onto a paper bowl and used an old brush to get the missed spots. And that's it for this video. The machine is so close to being done. The only things left to do are to paint the outside walls and add some realistic looking water and waterfalls. Feel free to leave a comment about what you like about the machine so far.